Hey, what's up, y'all? It's Marcus. Please go to ProphotoEdits.com where you can download my Lightroom presets and Photoshop action sets. So today we're going to review this bad boy, the 50mm 1.2 RF from Canon. And I really love this lens, so let's get into this review and I'll give you my thoughts on it. Share a bunch of images like we always do about this time, baby. All right, guys, so let's get into this 50 1.2 RF review. And you can see right here, this is the RF 1.2. So I just went into Lightroom and selected everything that I shot with the 50 1.2. And I'm going to go through some of my favorites with you guys. So please do me a favor and take a second and subscribe to the channel. Turn your notifications on. I have videos coming every week that take you behind the scenes on these cool photo shoots that I'm doing, cool video shoots that I'm doing, editing photos, editing videos, all the fun stuff. All right, guys, so I'm going to take you through some of these images, some of my favorites. All I did was go into Lightroom, and I go into 50 RF 1.2. Let's click on that so it'll give me all my 50 uh, RF 1.2 files. And I'm just going to browse through a bunch of these with you guys and show you so you can get it in a bunch of different scenarios, how it looks and what I really love about it. So on this shoot, we were up on top of a mountain, and we were doing a uh, shoot for a publication with a uh, dress that was made by a local designer that was really awesome. And um, right here, you can see that the flare, I just wanted to show you this shot because, let me take the preset off. This is straight out of camera. It was a little bit boring. I don't like all those greens. So I put one of my presets on there to give it more like a uh, faded look a little bit and um, dilute some of those colors a bit. And right here, you can see, you see that line of flare coming from the sun? That's nothing I added. That's just in there. This thing flares out so beautifully. And I'll show you that as we go along. And one of the reasons I like this lens so much is because it is pretty organic i mean i can see i can see a little bit of chromatic aberration right there but i don't care um i mean that's nothing we got these published and there was no issues with that at all now as we get rolling here i'm starting to take um real shots here because the light's getting a little bit lower and it's kind of cool so i think we got a little bit of a light behind the cloud on this shot and i started snapping with the 50 and i stopped it down to 1.4 here I have no reason why um, I did that. I probably just did it by mistake, but it doesn't matter. It didn't really change the look of the image too much. So I'll give you guys some backgrounds on these shots before we get into the published shots. I'm just pulling some of the material towards the camera. We're trying out different stuff, different techniques to give it more like a 3D look. And I put some of my presets on this from the Sunkiss preset pack. And we're bouncing the light back as far as lighting goes with the reflector right there, camera right. And the light's just directly behind her head. So here's another one of my favorite shots from the day. As you can see, I'm pulling off to the right of the lens uh, part of the dress out. And um, the sun's getting a little bit lower. And you can still see the hills back there going out of focus. You're getting the, uh, the sky. The rock here is kind of swirling out. So you have like 15, 20 minutes when you're trying to do a sunset shoot. So I was just messing around with the strobe. We were taking some strobe shots and we got this shot. And uh, it's kind of epic because she looks like she's like uh, a Statue of Liberty right there doing her cool ballet pose. And I got to an angle where I could get the trees out of the shot. And the 50 played very well for this because I, you got to see the whole valley. And you got to see where we're at. 85 would have kind of washed that away. 35 wouldn't have been uh, shallow enough depth of field. But looking at some of these shots where we're just using the reflector. Because you know the reflector is kind of like my main thing. I don't like to stroke too much unless it calls for it. And I think that um, this type of shot you just need to get these lens flares like you're looking at right here on the 50. And... Um, really let it be a natural type of shot. And you can see the fall off there. It's nice and soft. It's got a little bit of swirl to it. Really painterly. Um, give you just enough depth of field that we can see the mountains in the background. 85 would have washed that away and compressed it way out of the shot. 35 probably wouldn't have been shallow. So the lens doesn't have any harsh light leaks. Look at that light in her hair. It's nice and warm, nice and even. There's no rough edges or any uh, sun star looking things like the 35 L2 has. And you can see the flare at the bottom of this. It's nice and round. Um, the light's beautiful on this shot. You can still make out the background. You can make out the mountains. You can see that flare ring right there. Really nice and pretty. And I'm just using the Sunkiss preset too for my pack on these because the light was so pretty and I just wanted to give it this warm glow that that preset gives it. And um, they got published looking just like this. Such an epic uh, lens. Look at that flare right there at the bottom. Do you see that? That's so pretty. It's nice and circular. You can still see the detail in the background, see the location very well, but it's still nice and dreamy with that shallow depth of field. Very organic rendering from this lens. You're going to hear that a lot in this review. So here's a quick look at some of the other images from the 50RF 1.2 on the mountaintop that we got published before we move on to the next location and the next images. 
All right, so more shots with Lola here. And uh, like I said in my 85 review, I was using both of these lenses. And this is back open to 1.2 again, ISO 100. And we're just waiting for the light to uh, come down a bit. And we were doing a video on this day. So I was shooting some um, stills as well. And I just think that the 50 was such a great lens choice for, for this day. Um, super sharp on the eyes. Once it resolves, you can see, yeah, really sharp there. Really nice fall off. I'll pull the grain down on my preset here. Let me zoom out and I'll show you straight out of camera. Really boring. The colors were really hideous on that day, but it didn't matter. I put a preset on there and brought it back to life. So stepping back a bit here so you can see how it looks just with a, a half body shot. Um, really nice detail in the windows. Not overwhelming. She's still popping off of the background. And I'll show you one, one thing that it has here is, I don't know if you can see that purple fringe there but it does have some chromatic aberrations more than more than the 85 rf for sure the 85 rf has basically none um but this one lens does have and that's some of the trade-off i think of them not putting the refractive element in there but i don't care with one click that is gone and um it really does have a lot of character you can see as we get closer here shooting in portrait orientation super shallow depth of field still at 1.2 eye is incredibly sharp there now check this out this is just a file that's not edited at all haven't got to that yet you can see this hair it's actually starting over here of course because it's blowing in the wind um you can see how shallow the depth of field and how the fall off is that hair is in focus it's on the focal plane as it gets to the lip over here and starts to go out of focus you can't even find it anymore um super nice fall off there uh windows enough to show context of where she's at um, skin is nice and soft just have to touch up a few things there and this image will be great a shot i took when i was sitting in the uh, driver's side of the car because i was just running through a bunch of shots before we were shooting the video and even during i just pick up my usr and uh, started shooting stills while i was shooting the video with the 1dx mark ii and um preset on there you can tell how sharp it is and just uh painterly in the background really nice organic fall off look at the hand over there the hand is super out of focus um just a nice dreamy lens so here's a shot and um in my 85 review i did the same shot with the 85 and i'll put it up on the screen for you guys so you can tell the difference between the 51.2 and the 85 now the 50 what i like about it is it gives you a lot more context like I wouldn't have to explain to you what's going on back here like I did on the 85 and it's still nice and organic spray paint on the wall you can make out of this like a like a junkyard barn type of deal um, you can see Cliffy's Cobra back there behind her the gravel lot you can make out a lot more detail but it's still very pleasing you look at nice painterly bokeh at 1.2 I don't know how you can ask for more super sharp nice bokeh a lot of character for something being so sharp all right, let me show you guys where this lens shines as far as like the bokeh. It almost looks like a painting right here. Check this out. It got the swirl stuff going on down here, but as you zoom in here and look at this foliage back here, look how soft that is. And it bleeds into the busier background here with the um, antenna coming off the roof of this uh, tin building back here. And um, it definitely looks like a painting to me. You can see that just straight out of camera, boring colors i put a preset on there and it almost made it look like a a watercolor painting i have to fix this red back here in in post because i'm not a big fan of red you know that um but i don't know i've never had a 50 that had this much character and this sharp before super impressed with that so can you take close-up portraits with it sure you can um but you can see this pulling the facial features out a little bit um, it's elongating the nose and just pulling it towards the camera a little bit but it still has nice shallow fall off you can see that back shoulder is gone the eye is super crispy and sharp skin is still nice and soft because it's not an overly corrected lens so i was just rattling off a bunch of shots here uh, trying to get the hair flip thing and i i was in too close but we were losing light i didn't want to waste a bunch of time so um, i got a bunch of them and it was super accurate i'm not going to show you all the shots but that's where we ended up super pretty shot so some of my favorite shots were done at night with this lens and uh we shot this right before we were shooting some more of the video parts and it was like almost dark almost dark you still had a little bit of light where i could pull this out and i'll show you how i did it with the preset in a second but look how this flares 
the um, the headlight is shooting up this way. It's coming. It's flaring out the boot. Um, it's leaving this ring on this side from this headlight over here that's cropped out. Um, it's giving you this little green reflection there, which is pretty. Just another thing to look at. It's not harsh in any way. Um, you can still make out that these are garage doors, and this is like an old um, building. But she's still the star of the show with this uh, 50. To give you a little bit more context here, I took this with Sungati at the... Um, the boudoir shoot we were doing and i didn't use a bunch of the images from the 85 or the 50 in this just because the 35 was the the lens i was using this this room was pretty small here so i wanted to use the 35 as much as i could but you can see you know the bookshelves back here the bed post this lamp i could use this lens for some boudoir and not um, think that it was too sharp all right so you guys know that i always keep it honest with you guys i don't ever try to pull your leg um i'm here to try to help you be a, a better photographer as well as learn myself but um, I wanted to show you just how nice the colors are with this 50 and uh, how organic it is. Now back on top of this parking deck that I use sometimes because you don't really have to be close to anybody and you have a nice sunset. You can see getting nice context from the buildings. You're seeing this cool little flare of whatever that is coming here on the side straight out of camera. It's pretty boring, but you know, you can get my preset packing it to help you out there now it's nice and punchy the reds are really punchy and um, all i did was take it into photoshop and um, fix the skin take the hair off the face and stuff like that uh, nothing else really with the colors but some lenses that you'll shoot won't really be that warm when the uh when the sun flares it'll kind of just wash it out a little bit but uh this lens still retains a lot of that character in the color which i really love again here on top of the uh the buildings and you can see 50 was perfect for this shot you can still make out that it's a cityscape the sky is there and i shot this a little bit underexposed put the presets uh my preset and then fix the skin but you can tell that back here um really nice warm color cast coming into the uh, the hair from the uh the sun and the backlight super cool and i mean it helps that she has on a, a red jacket just to pull her off the background a little bit but um, that's something you got to think about when you're, you're choosing wardrobes. But anyway, I mean, just the lens was like the perfect choice for this. And I didn't really know that I'd fall in love with 50 the way I have, just because normally I'm 35, 85, but, um, 50 definitely have, has its place here. Um, especially for doing fashion photography. So now let's go into the studio and uh, this day we were doing like a Valentine's day shoot. And this is an unedited image. Um, straight out of camera right there and all I did was put a preset on and cropped it um, just to give it more of like a, a red hue here and uh, bring the colors into my little mocha mocha palette that I like to use a lot but um you can tell here on the eyes once it resolves there really sharp and that's at 1.2 for sure yep and then you can tell that the fall off is nice um, nice and organic it's not quite as soft fall off as the 85 1.2 but um, I didn't want that for that. I mean, I would have taken the, the little bit of softer fall off for this, but I like the character and I didn't want to use the 85 here because you wouldn't even been able to tell that these are roses in the background. You know what I mean? So I needed that. You can tell here, this is where the lens shines um, a lot with the fall off. Um, check this out. This is straight out of camera. Put one of my presets on there and uh, I'll bring the highlights probably down just a little bit, the exposure down a touch. There you go. And, um, you can tell that as you get back here, I was running out of rose petals, so I didn't have anything to fill this space, and I can always, you know, fill that in Photoshop, but um, I wouldn't really have to if I didn't want to because the fall off is so nice that it doesn't really pull your eye back there. It pulls your eye right here where it's in focus, and it is definitely in focus. There you go. Resolves. Nice in focus on the eye. I think it actually grabbed that eye. And um, as you can see by the chin here, really nice fall off and the shoulder here is nice and soft you don't have to do any skin work so cool bras out of focus um the hands up here out of focus but you can still tell that there's a rose there 85 would have just turned that into a glob of nothing um so i used the 50 in this so this was the image that i posted last week on my timeline and um this was uh i used my presets and then i fixed the skin in photoshop and brought a little bit more of the green out in her eyes because she has this really cool green hair and um, i used the 85 on this shoot as well but i really like some of these shots from the 50 and i'll run through some of the behind the scenes on here and show you um the lighting scenarios i know this one's a little bit more punchy than some of the 85 shots that i have on my instagram and you can go down to my instagram i'll put it right here and you can check it out if you want to um check out how this falls off 
uh, look how cool this is. It's almost like a medium format look. Really nice, smooth, round, circular um, balls here on the, uh, the necklace. Skin is nice and smooth and soft and fading away. And I'll show you some of the, uh, the unedited images here in a second. Now you can tell her eyes do have some green in them. I just played it up because that was what the, uh, the fantasy um, uh, submission was looking for. But neither here nor there. You're here to look at this, this uh, lens. Check this out. Let's fall off back here. This green in her hair, nice and smooth. Just like on the 85 RF that I was reviewing. You can't really pick up where this fall off starts. It's nice and smooth. And it still lets you get in tight enough to where it gives you a little bit of that pull, you know, towards the uh, towards the camera where it doesn't flatten the face as much. And I mean, you have to kind of gauge by who the model is. I mean, she has tiny dainty features, so you can get away with this on it with a 50. Somebody else, you might not be able to do so. Um, you just kind of have to know what you're doing. But if I just reset it, you can see I lit this a little bit of a harsher, more poppy. Um, type of light and I was using the beauty dish with the 8600 and I had a grid inside the beauty dish and then the sock on top of that and um, I didn't have any lighting going on in the background as you can see and I did it several different things that I'll show you different lighting wise and uh, put one of my presets on there it pulled the blacks up it pulled the colors and made it more of a I would say a softer editorial type of look I love using that preset a lot for studio stuff now let's go back here to a different um, version with the 50 right here and I was doing a different um I was just trying a bunch of different backgrounds like I have this I don't know what you call it, it's like a sequin throw I guess and I put it behind her just to give her a lot of bokeh in the background or bokeh balls I should say in the background and you can buy these at like any fabric store for five or ten bucks for a roll um, I have a bunch of different backdrops that I use just to give different appearance to the look. But anyway, on the 51.2 wide open, let's go in here. File has not been messed with other than one of my um, presets. And you can see eyes are really sharp, super sharp. And the eyelash is already out of focus. That means it nailed the eyes. And um, some people, as I say, like to shoot these stop way down to F8. I don't because I don't want to fix skin for a million years. And I like the medium format look. I like this is just what I what I grew up loving. Um, I don't want this to pull my focus away. I want it to look, you know, really nice and painterly back there, like something that um, you can't do with a cell phone or a point and shoot. And the necklace is going out of focus here. Eyes are definitely in focus. The hair is kind of fading away. So just a really cool, nice sharp lens, but not so sharp that it's digital looking. So we got pretty creative here and uh, we were just having some extra time on our hands. I pulled out a piece of plexiglass that I had, um, stuck it up on a, um, a light stand in the background and just hung it there. Sprayed some Windex on there, which is bubbly. I sh should, probably should have just used water, but we we're in a time crunch. So quickly, final thoughts after owning this lens for a year. It's the best 50 I've ever shot. It has great flare. Um, it doesn't have any type of weird sun stars when it flares out. It has great contrast. It's not overly sharp and digital. It is super sharp, but it's not like a Sigma Art. I owned that lens for a while, the 51.4 Sigma Art, and it was just kind of okay to me. I've owned the turd of a lens in the 51.4G from Nikon. That was terrible. It was super soft. Nice bokeh, but just too soft. Um, slow to focus. The 58 1.4G, on the other hand, had a really nice character to it, but it was really expensive and really soft close up and now that i'm shooting more canon than anything else this 50 just uh, takes the cake from me all right y'all please like and subscribe hit your notification bell because i always have reviews coming up and i take you behind the scenes uh show you how i got the shot show you how i shoot the video help you guys edit and a bunch of cool stuff so let's build this community up and um until next time it's marcus love you guys Peace.